Hello and welcome to Alive After Reading. This is episode 215 and I am on the porch because spring has come to Minnesota and uh, even though it's not the warmest spring yet, it's still pretty good to be outside on the porch. So while I record this, I have kind of a topic in mind. I mean, because I'm solo again today, obviously. Uh, I wouldn't record a, an interview from the porch because it's just there's no network out here, really. However, I did have some thoughts about, shall we say, H.P. Lovecraft, but not just H.P. Lovecraft, the horror author, famous uh, early 20th century horror author who has a ton of influence over future fantasy, horror, and science fiction um, with his stories like The Call of Cthulhu and... The, um, the, at the Mountains of Madness, that kind of thing. His whole Cthulhu mythos, which he didn't coin that term. I believe that was his editor who came up with it. But he was also a very problematic person, especially by modern standards, because he was extremely racist and bigoted and all sorts of not weird stuff. Pro also very in, but he's a very in, he was also a very insulated character, historically speaking, like insular. I mean, insular character, where he would he had sm a small circle by far, extremely introverted but with a very dark sense of the world. Very afraid of everything, from what I understand. Or from, of a lot of stuff, anyway. Which is, might explain some of that bigotry, you know. But explain it or not, it's still ridiculous how some of his stories are so racist. Granted, the one I just read yesterday actually doesn't have really any racism in it. Um, it's just about how hideous this ghoul is. It's called The Outsider. And this, the, outside, the, the, the narrator is a ghoul. Spoiler alert, sorry. Um, the Outsider is, what, 80 years old? 100 years old now? Yeah, it's about 100 years old, so... S S Statute of Limitations has expired on that one. But it's a really cool little story, except for the fact that the writing style is also somewhat maybe overdone. You know, I mean, not maybe. It's it's a bit quite overdone. And just the way, like the way an ADHD person speaks, except extremely flowery. And I say an ADHD person because I'm an ADHD person, and I've just recently had that on my mind as well. So, rambling aside, Lovecraft is a very influential author, but a very problematic author. And I find that kind of thing, that kind of that kind of el those elements together, very interesting. Because there's actually a lot of authors out there like that today. And I'm not going to name any of them because they're going to vary based on what your politics and worldview are, but. I definitely have some authors that I would say, oh, I don't really, I'm okay never meeting that person, or I, I don't really ever want to see them, even though I liked their books, or I still like their books. And that's a weird feeling, you know? I mean, I, there, I, there's a lot of people out there like that, though. There's tons of people, because anybody who doesn't agree with you, or just might even see you as an enemy, can be a, can be a skill of writer and, a, and tell good stories. Which is sometimes hard to reckon with. I know there's people out there like, I don't know, um, I think, actually, yeah, it was uh, um, in The War of Art. Yeah, The War of Art, that book about writing and trying to be more motivated and stuff. The author, geez, I'm, I'm blanking on his name. I've said it before, even on this show, but the author of The War of Art, Stephen Pressfield, thought, uh, says in that book that that fundamentalists can't create art. and base, And he compares all kinds of all kinds of uh, aspects of fundamentalism, not just religion, but other other traditions and movements and stuff. And he says these people are fundamentalists and they basically cannot create art, which is kind of insane and ridiculous. And I've seen counter to all of that. Art gets created by all cultures and all societies and really all people in some way or other, I think. that's my, But maybe that's a personal belief. I, don't, I suppose I don't have a large enough sample size to say all people create art. But a large number of people create art. And if someone as weird as me, like, I mean, I have the autism. I mention that all the time. I, I mean, Asperger's syndrome I was diagnosed with when I was a teenager. I, well, actually a kid, preteen. Um, and I, I got all these other problems. I had a trouble identifying with people for a long time. 
And if I can create a book that people, or at least a lot of people, enjoy and think and say the characters make sense, well, you know, anyone can do it. Well, I mean, within, within reason, right? If you can write the words, you can learn to write a story. That's my opinion. I know even, even like Stephen King thought, uh, he, he wrote in, the, in on writing, I disagree with this one as well. And on writing, he says that you are either born a writer or you're not, basically. You, you can, or you need to have the basic implements and then you build your skills from there. Ah, I think though that equipment is super common and maybe to the point where basically people who don't even know they want to be writers or don't even know they could be a writer when they are born can do it. I say all this by the long way of getting to... There's ne It's never too late to start, but also... Anybody you can imagine can write a book. Anybody. Except, I mean, there are some supremely disabled people, right? Anyone with language, probably. Anyone with language and writing ability, right, can write a book. Most people, the vast majority of people who, who live right now, can write stories. And they should, if, at least if they want to. That's my opinion, again. I don't know why, I mean, I was originally going to title this episode Problematic Reruns because I was thinking about this a lot when I was uh, talking to my brother yesterday and, well, I guess it was, yeah, so, and I kept thinking about how if I had to do my life over again, like if I could go back with my memories and do it all again, I'm, I'm not that old, but if I could go back and do high school again or college again, I'd be such a better person. It'd be so much easier to be a better person too. But... It, co it takes all those experiences to make what you are, to make what I am now. And that means that it's, I mean, not only is it obviously impossible, but give yourself a time machine, allow yourself a rerun. But the, th the reason I thought about this is that H.P. Lovecraft, actually, that's a big theme in his work, is reliving your life in some of his stories. Some of them are you just go insane. Others, there's the Randolph Carter stories, where he's the closest thing to a hero and a analog to himself that Lovecraft really writes about that's complimentary at least and he's basically a, a sorcerer, a magic user a weird, one of the most interesting guys in the Cthulhu Mythos, humans in the Cthulhu Mythos anyway and there's not a whole lot of them that are really that interesting as far as I can tell but Randolph Carter as a character goes back in time to himself but he doesn't go back physically he just sends his mind back in time to when he was a kid at one point and that is it's a maddening concept, and it's one that I'm not saying this could really happen. I don't think it could, but it's an interesting, I think even fascinating, example of a counterfactual or a, a fantasy situation. What if you could live your life all over again? What would you do different? Do differently? Would I sit here? Would I even start a podcast? I mean, I like my podcast. Probably I would. I've always liked podcasts, but would I? If I went back with my knowledge now, mm, there's a lot of time I wouldn't have wasted. I, I just, I guess from motivation perspectives, they, they kind of, you get to start over every day. So don't waste your days. I, uh, I really should get back to writing, but I, I just, I, I thought this was going to be about something else. But imagine you're rerunning your life and imagine starting right now and starting a new life. I don't, I don't mean to do this as a motivational thing, but I kind of stumbled into it <laughs> backwards, I guess. But yeah, if you're gonna if you're a writer, I think a lot of people who listen to this podcast are writers or authors. Then check out and out and then start start your process anew. Think about how you're doing things. How would you do them now if you were starting from scratch? And do them that way. Or another good example here is if you haven't started writing yet and you want to, just start. That's my usual my usual kind of. What is it? What's the word? My, my usual exhortation. Just start. Just go out there or sit down in your chair, write, talk into a voice recorder if you have one and you want to do that. Just write. And write stories that you like, that you care about. I recently had an issue with a couple books, actually. I mean, the first one was that Pillar Universe sequel. It was like, I just couldn't do it. I just couldn't write it because I didn't care about the sequel. I figured I thought that book was done, and I get back to the sequel that it was half done after from from a couple years ago, from 2018, and I'm like, I don't want to write this. This is depressing. This is frustrating. This isn't the book that this book should be. So I canceled the pre-order because I knew I couldn't do justice to it in, in a short amount of time by starting over. I'm gonna finish that book eventually, 
but it has to start over from scratch. It has to be a completely different concept for the sequel because it just wasn't working. It wasn't the joyful adventure the first book was to any degree. It was just kind of a slog, and I didn't want to release that. But if I had to do it over again, I mean, I'd go back to 2018 and I'd just write the whole book all the way through. I, would qu I wouldn't quit so many books if I could do this all over again. I quit a lot of books in my day. You know, I've, quit, I've probably five or ten unfinished, five to ten unfinished man manuscripts running, lying around that are significantly long. They're like as long as novellas or even full novels at this point. But they're not done, and some of them never will be. That, that thought kind of makes me sad. But the, the, the other thing about this is that the more books you don't write, or the more books you leave abandoned, is that it, you still use the time. So the more books you quit, and this had been on my mind because I did quit, but I think it was the right decision because I, th I think that was the wrong book. And I've written the wrong book before too, like Shadow Prince. I wrote the wrong book in the, the first time I wrote Shadow Prince, and then I had to write it all over again, which is why it took so long to get that book out. But regardless, I, I've waffled on a bit. I really do want to encourage everyone to just try writing if they haven't already. And if you have written already, and you, you, if, you write, if you've written a novel, or even if you've written part of the book, starting over from scratch isn't the worst thing in the world. Starting a new book, or just just plain starting your, your perspective over is really the thing. You don't have to relive your life to start new every day. Thanks for listening, everybody. You can find my books on Amazon.com. Well, Country is out. And actually, I just started working on the sequel, so um, Demon, Hunt, Demon Scroll. If you haven't read the first book... Start with Demon Scroll. It's actually really good. And now, because I've revised it since I got some of those negative reviews on it, to be honest. So thanks for listening, everyone. Stay safe, and I'll talk to you again soon. That tears it.